Hey everyone, I'm Julie from The Techie Teacher, and today I want to talk about how you can engage your audience using Poll Everywhere for Google Slides. Poll Everywhere is a web tool that's been around for a while, and more recently, probably within the last year or maybe year and a half, they provided the option for you to embed their polls into Keynote, PowerPoint, and Google Slides presentations. Today we're going to focus on Google Slides, but just know that it's very similar when it comes to embedding them into PowerPoint and Keynote presentations. And this is great for a wide variety of people. Perhaps you're an administrator who gives presentations to your staff and you need quick feedback from them. Or maybe you're a classroom teacher that needs to keep your students captivated from the beginning to an end of a lesson. This is great for that. Or maybe you do professional development sessions, or you're just a public speaker that wants to keep your presentations entertaining. This is the tool for you, and it's a way for you to capture your audience attention and keep them involved throughout your presentation. I'm going to flip my screen and show you how this works. You will need to be using Google Chrome, the Chrome browser, in order to install the Poll Everywhere Chrome extension that will allow you to embed the polls into your Google Slides. Okay, on the left-hand side of my screen, you're gonna see my cell phone projected. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna see my presentation here in a minute. But first, this is what you're going to need to go to in the Chrome Web Store first, the Poll Everywhere for Google Slides, and you're going to install that extension. When you open up a Google Slides presentation or when you go to create a new one, you will then see that a Poll Everywhere drop-down menu will appear up at the top. Uh, this will stay there as long as you have the extension installed. You can also get to polleverywhere.com by clicking the little icon up at the top that looks like a bar graph. That will appear once you install the extension and click on Poll Everywhere for Google Slides. Uh, you can create your own free account. If you already have one, then you'll just sign in. And you can do that straight within Google Slides the first time you're there. Instead of log out down here, you'll see sign in and it will take you straight to this website to get all set up. But once you have your presentation and you're signed in, creating the polls is super easy. But first I wanna show you what it looks like and show you some different options that you have for polls because it's not just bar graphs that you can create. When you come down here to see some of my slides that I have with a poll embedded, you'll notice that the poll appears as a rectangular shape. You can make it as small or as big as you would like and you can add other text to your slide. It is only activated when your Google Slides presentation is in presentation mode. You will not see any type of results and you cannot interact with the poll when the presentation is in editing mode. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to launch my presentation in presentation mode. And this is just a basic slide that I have. And over on my phone, I have already bookmarked my Poll Everywhere website. And let me show you what that means. So, you know, with any presentation, you talk a little bit about who you are, and then maybe you wanna to talk to your audience about who they are, you know, what is their background. So here's a poll just for that. And if you notice, as soon as I went to that slide, it activated the poll. And up at the top of the slide, you can see the two different ways that participants can respond. They could go to your website, pollev.com slash juliesmith368. And that was automatically created for me when I set up my Poll Everywhere account. Or they can text message uh, that information using their cell phone. I say stick with the website because some of the polls, if you choose to use them, do not have the option for participants to text in their answer. And I'll show you which ones those are here in a minute. But on my phone, I'm gonna go ahead, since I've already bookmarked my Poll Everywhere uh, website and tap Poll. It looks like an app, but it's just a bookmarked website. And as soon as I open it, it's going to launch that very first poll that I have in presentation mode in my Google Slides presentation. Now I also have my iPad and Chromebook set up so I can show you what the polls look like as people are uh, clicking or tapping their answer on whatever device they're using. So then after I have my results from here, I'm gonna to go to my next slide, just pressing the arrow key on my keyboard and it will take me to the next slide. 
and it automatically launches my next poll and it changes on every user's device. It's a lot like Nearpod if you're familiar with that web tool. And in this case, it you can upload pictures to be your answer choices. This is great for those of you that teach the younger grades. You could definitely use this uh, with the little ones and they can tap how they're feeling today, what, which emoji represents their feelings. And I'm just gonna click on all of them so you can see how it automatically changes. There are a lot of different customizations that you can do with your polls that I'll show you here in a minute. I'm gonna go to my next slide. Here's a really interesting way that you can collect information from your audience. There are clickable images. So in this case, uh, they are asked to tap or click where they live. And if they live outside of the United States, I usually just say click in the white section. But I'm in Michigan, so I'm gonna tap Michigan, and you can see that a little green marker popped in for where I tapped. I'm gonna tap down here on Texas on my cell phone, Boom, you can see where I tapped. And notice on my cell phone, you can clear your response and try again. So if a smaller child taps or clicks uh, in the wrong area, they can clear their last response and do it again. I actually do that quite often, click in the wrong area. And I'll do one more over here in Vermont. So just a different way to represent data that you're collecting from the people in your audience. Just know that with your free account, you do not know who is submitting answers. But with the paid subscriptions with Poll Everywhere, there is the option to have users sign in and then you can collect that information and use it as a formative assessment, maybe in the classroom. Uh, here's another type of poll, same thing. Uh, you can use different images that you upload. I created this image in PowerPoint and saved it as a JPEG. And then people can just go and click on the image that they are feeling for the day. And there you have it. Moving on to the next example. I just threw this one in to show you that Poll Everywhere supports animated GIFs. You can put images next to uh, your polls that you have. So maybe you want your audience to take a look at a graph or a map and uh, tell you something about it. What, what do they think? Or maybe you're asking a right or wrong question and they're answering it. Just a different way to assess or just to gather information. Now, if I come over here and hover my cursor, you'll notice these icons that pop up. One is clear poll results. So let's say, you know, the students are being silly or you want to do the poll again. You can quickly clear it right then and there and do it all over again. You also have the option to customize your polls uh, in so many different ways. You can change the colors, you can change the orientation of your graphs, you can change the backgrounds, you can um, add your logo for branding purposes. I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. There's just so much here that you can accomplish with this little uh, paintbrush tool. All right, I'm gonna move on, clicking the arrow tool, or not the arrow tool, but the arrow key on my keyboard. Now here is an example of a poll where the user is submitting responses. So let me active, I need to turn my phone back on, here we go. So they can enter a response to what types of devices do students have access to in your buildings? I'm gonna type Chromebook here and submit it. And maybe on my iPad here, I'm gonna type in iPad and submit it. And you can notice, and you notice that uh, a, what's it called? Uh, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> a word web. I'll, I'll come up with it in a minute. Why can't I think of what this is? Um, it starts to form. But you can come up here to that paintbrush tool again. Word cloud, that's what I was looking for at WordWeb, goodness. And you can change the type of visual look that you want the responses to show. You can do the text wall, and more than one answer, of course, could be submitted. You could do the cluster, or you could do a ticker where the results come ticking away from the right-hand side of the screen. So that's just an option that you can uh, mark before you actually use your poll in real time.
Moving to the next one, want to see more. This is just kind of an example how you can intermix polls with regular slides. Here is an example of um, dragging and dropping images or words to rank the order of something. So this is great for sequencing or just ranking favorites of some sort. And in this case, students are um, drag and dropping their uh, favorite emojis, what they like the most. And so here, let me submit one from my iPad so you can see how the results change. And that's how it's represented. Here's an example of a branded poll. I added my Techie Teacher logo to the top. You can change the colors to match your brand. And this is another open-ended response. Type one word that describes your feelings about today's presentation. So on my cell phone, I'm gonna go ahead and do excited, um, happy, and so forth. So here is an example of another type of uh, open-ended response. And then what other questions do you have? This is a different kind of poll as well. I'm just gonna type in a random question. How old are you? Question mark, submit. And then on my iPad, I wanna do another one. What's up? But what happens is on every person's device, all of the questions that are submitted from everyone in the audience pops up. So then, people can push up the questions that they really wanna hear the answers to the most. And perhaps that's what you, the presenter, will focus on first, the ones at the top, and then if time allows, you can work your way down the list. I think that is a really awesome option and pull everywhere. And then finally, something that you could include at the very end of your presentation is a survey. These are uh, questions that the audience go through at their own pace. So here on my uh, phone, I'm gonna start my survey and you can do multiple choice and click next. Another multiple choice, could you teach someone how to use Poll Everywhere? Absolutely, next. They can enter their response. What other questions do you have? None at this time, submit click next, and then what topic would you like to cover during our next PD session? Maybe I'll say Google Classroom and submit. And you'll notice that over on the presentation view, you can see everyone's progress and how many surveys have been submitted. So I'm gonna escape out of this presentation and then show you where those results go. So I'm gonna come over here and click my Poll Everywhere icon up at the top, Poll Everywhere for Google Slides. I'm already signed into my account. So I am going to go to, oops, that there, my polls. And here's all of my information. It's hard to see because I'm split screen, but you can see all of the responses that I've gathered here. And these will stay until you have to clear your polls. And there's a quick way to clear your polls so you can use it again with your next, uh, your next audience. Just click on the little square there and then clear. And I'm gonna click OK. And it says it will archive, but usually that is for uh, paid subscriptions to poll everywhere. I'm gonna go back to the Google Slides presentation and real quickly show you how you can easily insert a poll. You're gonna come up here to that Poll Everywhere drop down menu, click, click New and click Poll and look at all of the beautiful options you have for your questions. You can do your multiple choice where you can add text as your answer or you can add images. Just so you know, I can't, I haven't figured out how to add text and an image together as one response unless I make it in a program and save it all together as one image file. But when I type text here and upload an image, it's only the image that populates. Then you have your word cloud, your Q&A, you rank your order, whatever you want to include. I'm just gonna do a Q&A and say, did you have fun? Question mark and click insert. And look what happens. It automatically creates a slide on the next slide that, you know, I was I was on slide 13, so it um, embedded one 
for slide 14 right after it. You can move it anywhere you want. And then as soon as you click present, it will launch and it's ready to go. You can start typing in your responses in this case. And remember, you can come up here, hover your cursor, click the little paintbrush for visual settings and change the look to make it look exactly how you want it. Lots and lots of really, really nice options, including.